Good afternoon everyone, it is David Schlothauer here with another detailed weather forecast as we are tracking a winter storm now in the High Plains. This is going to bring impacts to the Great Lakes and the Northeast through the next couple of days with an additional second storm system that can bring even more significant winter storm impacts for the Deep South, for the Midwest, and also for the Great Lakes, including for the Northeast by the middle of next week. Now, before I do get started, if you're new to the YouTube channel and you really like these detailed weather videos, please consider subscribing if you like the content, share this with your family and friends on social media, and also hit the like button and leave a comment in the section below this video. Also, I would highly recommend checking out the Mesovort WX website that Evan J created on January the 1st. It's a really great, awesome website where you can see our blog posts and much more. So without further ado, let's get started and take a look at the European model for Saturday evening here on January the 21st, 2023 at precisely 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as we're keeping an eye on this winter storm that we've been talking about over the last few days in previous videos. And look at it here. Here it is. It's over Kansas. It's over Southern Iowa at this time, and this is going to continue to move further northeast into the Great Lakes, and then eventually impacting the northeast by the latter part of the weekend into early next week, like on Monday. So let's go forward here um, into Sunday morning. By the way, the date and time is above my head, so make sure you do refer to that on the top right side of the screen. So if you're knowing what model I'm using, what perimeter, the date and time, it's all up there. Okay, so here's a look at Sunday morning here at around 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we can see here, this is basically where the snow is going to be. It's very light in nature. So we're not talking a lot about snowfall accumulations with this first winter storm. But there's further moisture to the south here, like along the Gulf Coast into the southeast, where there's going to likely be light to moderate rainfall that is anticipated. Take note of the positively tilted trough here. This is what's going to keep the system from getting too dynamic. That's why we're not talking a lot about severe weather with this one, nor are we talking a lot about snow for the upper Midwest or the Central Plains, which is good because there's a second one that looks a lot more concerning than the first one. So let's go into Sunday evening here right around say about 9 to 10 o'clock central and eastern time and we can see there's the snow there very light in nature maybe a little bit heavier though if you're in central Pennsylvania if you're um, in the Pittsburgh Pennsylvania if you're in Erie Pennsylvania right there that's where you're continuing with some more moderate to heavy uh, snowfall that is anticipated as there's a lot of cooler air and a lot of enough moisture for the snow to get it produced. So again, that's a look here at again, um, seven, about eight to nine o'clock, even 10 o'clock at night for Eastern time zone. And then let's go forward. There's a break that is anticipated, but not to mention here also into even perhaps now Monday afternoon, there could be some lingering heavy snow showers over um, Connecticut, over Massachusetts, over um, Rhode Island, over Nantucket, over Cape Cod, even for southern New Hampshire and southern Vermont here, you're likely to get the leading edge to this snowstorm that passes to just to your south. And that's what the European model has been in strong agreement of thus far. Now we're going forward here into Tuesday, a break, a nice reprieve ahead of the next storm system that sets up down here in Texas. But look at this, dry weather. So any traveling should be done on Tuesday if you're going anywhere with family, if you're friends, if you're going to a neighbor's house or a friend's house, yeah, take the advantage of dry weather that is anticipated on Tuesday. Because again, right down here, we have another storm system that really is in the making here on the European model. And this one still looks pretty significant, especially over northern Texas and New Mexico. We're looking at moderate to heavy snowfall that is anticipated. Going forward here into, uh, this is right around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time for January the 24th, 2023. We can see where the system actually is. There's your surface flow in eastern Texas into the Arklatex region to the north. We still have the snow that is anticipated. Let's go forward here into around 6 a.m. Central Standard Time for January the 25th. And we can see there is the shield of moderate to heavy snowfall. This is more dynamic more of a negative tilt to the jet stream with the flow pattern with the trough axis. 
So we get more dynamics. We get warmer air that gets pulled in from the south, and we get more colder air that gets pulled in from the north. And so when these two kind of do this, right, they kind of want to do, they want to balance themselves out, right? Well, they're trying to in the way of a lot of precipitation and a lot of wind and dynamics. So that's what we're seeing here on the European model. And that continues all the way to 3 and 4 p.m. Central and Eastern time in the Great Lakes in the Northeast. Look at this. Pretty healthy looking system. And not to mention, I almost forgot here, severe weather is going to be a big deal with this one. Perhaps uh, Tuesday afternoon into early Wednesday morning, we might have a tornado threat along to go with damaging winds and also some large hail. But this could likely be wind driven similar to the other severe weather events that we've seen. So that's a look at the European model, and this continues all the way into, say, 3 and 4 in the morning uh, for Eastern time. Moderate to heavy snowfall. There's a surface low that continues to really deepen, and so by, um, say, Thursday afternoon, it really gets explosive here. Very intense snowfall and rainfall that is anticipated right where the surface low is. Very heavy snow to the north, and then that moves out of the area by the time we go into early Friday morning. Whew! Nice good reprieve, but look at this, Pacific Northwest in on the action again with more snowfall that is anticipated. Really quickly, I wanted to show you all the GFS. Again, I like to compare models. That's what I'm here for. I want to make sure I'm providing the most honest weather information as accurate as I can possible because there's other YouTubers out there that seem to hype things up a little bit or seem to underdo things. So we got to be careful on um, who you tune into just for the sake of things, right? And so we can see uh, for um, Sunday morning, the year, uh, the GFS or the US GFS indicating light snow that continues all the way into Sunday afternoon into the Northeast. That's the first system, by the way, that's the weakened system. So that moves through very similar to the European model indicating that's where the snow is going to be. And right now it looks like it's going to avoid um, New Jersey mostly. This line of snow is just to your north, but still snowing in Syracuse, possibly Albany, New York, going to get a quite a bit of snowfall out of this uh, first system as it moves through. And then a break, and then the next system. More aggressive on the GFS model, to say the least here, by Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning. Look at that. Pretty dynamic. Lots of snowfall to the north here, so maybe some winter storm warnings could be issued for sure with this one. It does not look like we're going to have blizzard warnings with this one. I'm not as confident with that, but still... Very heavy snowfall and strong winds will be a sure thing with this one. And then especially for the northeast, maybe some blizzard warnings for the extreme northeast, like northern Maine, central Maine, could get in on the worst action with this one. And then another system tries to dip down. But again, we're only going to take two storms at a time to keep this video nice and short and sweet. All right, really quickly, here's a look at the snowfall forecast on the US GFS model. Again, showing more snow here for northern portion of Arkansas, southern Missouri, and um, pretty much for Oklahoma. In yesterday's 12Z output, if we look at that, we can see it's been pretty consistent. Now, it has trended down a little bit on the, um, there we go, I don't know what happened there, uh, has trended down a little bit over uh, for the Oklahoma and Kansas. That's because the snow is currently going on, but still quite a bit of snow there. Possibly, again, one to two feet I mean, two feet at the very most in isolated locations. That's the most that we would see through Friday. Again, that's comparing this coming storm for the weekend and into the middle of next week with that second system. I'm comparing two storms, folks. It's not just one storm. It's a couple of them. All right, so the European deterministic model also in pretty good agreement here on the snowfall forecast for the extreme northeast, anywhere between, say, 7 to 10 inches of snow in general with some areas maybe up to 12 to 18 inches, especially over Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine could get the most snow, as well as, again, Canada up here. I don't want to forget my about my viewers. Like uh, if you're in Quebec and Ontario, Canada, you could be looking at as much as three to six inches of snow at the very most, especially over far eastern Canada, you might see about a foot and a half to maybe a couple of feet of snowfall as, again, you're in the, the midst of two big snowstorms for that area. They typically bomb out in the eastern Newfoundland and the Labrador portion of Canada. All right, ensembles pretty in pretty good agreement here for the next two 
storms anywhere between about two to four inches for the Midwest. The upper Midwest may see four to eight inches of snowfall. The extreme Northeast may be as much as 10 to 12 inches of snowfall at the very most, according to the ensembles. Now, another thing that we're going to be contending with with this winter storm will be the severe weather. As I mentioned briefly, when we were looking at the precipitation forecast, who's going to get what, right? So the severe weather looks pretty concerning, especially right along the Gulf Coast where there's sufficient moisture advection, where we have enough instability right along the brim of the coast and enough sufficient shear. A lot of strong deep layer shear. We got winds doing this, folks, shifting very quickly with height. And what that will lead to is curvature to the hodographs. We can see a few organized storm segments with this. So we can see surface winds here from the southeast at the surface. Those are strong, too. 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. So when we take a look at the low levels of the atmosphere, anywhere between 40 to 50 miles an hour, uh, actually more like say uh, 55, about 60 to 70 miles an hour at 5,000 feet. So this is low levels. This is not surface winds at the low levels. And then when we take a look at our upper levels, we have southwesterly winds here, anywhere between about 70 to 80 knots. That is really strong. And that's, again, you saw the wind direction shift, right? We went from southeasterly at the surface to southwesterly aloft here. So that is really going to veer these winds. So we could be seeing some isolated discrete storms or prefrontal convection within a very narrow warm sector. And again, that's if it develops as what models show. And that's what we're seeing. Again, limited instability here. We have the kinematics that are favorable for this, but we're losing a couple of other perimeters. And one of them is the instability. We don't, we don't have a lot of good quality instability over Mississippi, over portions of Alabama. We only have good quality instability or modest amounts of that in southern Louisiana, and that's because we are going to have limited daytime heating and boundary layer destabilization that does take place. So like areas like, say, Mississippi and Alabama, your temperatures are going to be pretty cold. 40s and 30s during the... Oh, wait, no. These are not temperatures. Excuse me. These are two points. What am I talking about, folks? Uh, so you got uh, dew point temperatures anywhere between 30 and 40 degrees to the south here in this narrow corridor we do have dew points that are going to be in the low to mid 60s so areas like baton rouge louisiana gonzalez louisiana and new orleans definitely need to be on the lookout here there could be a few intense tornadoes right or riding along this warm front depending again of how the shear actually ends up and they it does look pretty significant at this given time so, uh, therefore, the Storm Prediction Center is not going a little ahead of themselves. They're going to keep this at a 15% chance for severe weather for the Deep South, like southern Alabama, southern Mississippi, um, Louisiana, and portions of Florida, like Pensacola, Panama City, Florida, under the slight risk for severe weather right now. I, um, it is going to be interesting to see if they want to go for a 30%, but this is the day four outlook, so they're probably going to keep this at slight, I am sure, for day three. I'm not quite convinced about an enhanced risk yet, just because, again, the perimeters that we looked at, limited instability and moisture advection. We only have a lot of the deep layer shear that might be enough to facilitate at least a few storm segments that do develop. Now, another quick thing that we got to keep an eye on on the global computer models is the amount of cold air that could be developing by the end of next week into the weekend. So getting very close to February here to end January, we'll be looking at another Arctic outbreak for the Northern Plains. Now, this is extremely uncertain to everyone. So please Take this with a grain of salt. Uh, I know a few YouTubers are starting to talk about this. I'm leaning on the lower end of the scale. So again, what you see here could be very concerning, could be historic, but again, please take this with a grain of salt. I, I ask you all very nicely to do that, all right? Because this is not the official forecast yet. It's still too far, and there's a lot of uncertainty that does remain as far as how this is going to end up being. So this is a look at the GFS model, and we can see by, uh, let's see here, let's go into Saturday afternoon here, 0Z. Sorry, the time is not really well indicated here. It's on the top left side of the screen, right below where it says temperature anomaly. And this 
is in Zulu time, unfortunately. I wish they would have local time. That would be a little bit better. But this is right around 6 p.m. on Saturday for the Northern Plains. And you have temperatures that are going to be uh, 30 to 40 degrees below average. And I'm going to roll through this really quickly. But it gets more intense by the time we get into day 10, where we could have temperatures 30 to 40 degrees below average with some areas here that could have temperatures 50 degrees below average. These are your temperature anomalies, by the way, departures from normal. And this could get really significant here. Uh, 65 degrees, 63 degrees below average in portions of the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa. This could be historic if it does develop. But as I mentioned earlier, please take this with a grain of salt. This is not an official. This is very uncertain still. Models are really juggling all over the place with this. In fact, the European model has temperatures slightly above average for this area. So again, this um, really outlines a huge uncertainty possibility in the numerical forecasts. Now, if this does end up happening, this could again be historic. That's because we have temperatures that could get down to as low as negative 50 degrees below average, or not below average, but actual air temperature here over Wisconsin, 43 degrees below zero. And look at all these areas here. This is not wind chills at all. Um, these are actual air temperatures. So very cold again for the Midwest, for the Great Lakes, and for the northern tier of the United States. Well, anyways, I sure hope you all enjoyed this video. I sure hope it helped you out a lot and understand with what we could be dealing with here over the next 10 days across the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Northeast as far as that snow goes, some severe weather for the Deep South, and some gusty winds, but also it's a good idea that you become part of the Mesovort WX website here by signing up today, becoming a member. It is a very awesome uh, website that Evan James created on January the 1st. This is where you could see our different blog posts. This is me right here. Yep, I have posted twice already in the last 24 hours on our weather pattern back west. And then of course, other people making their own blogs. Now, not anyone can make blogs or post stuff. Um, you got to get verified through Evan and he only picks a couple or a few people in order to do that. So if you want to become a member to today to look at the blogs and what we do. Um, there's a link in the description below leading to that website. Very awesome, folks. I'm excited for you to all be part of that. But anyways, share, like, and subscribe if you like the content today, and also leave a comment in the section below, and I will be back with you more tomorrow with more on this wicked weather madness.